everyone. Good morning. My name is Kristen and I am the compassion manager here at Vineyard 61. And I am just, I'm jumping to tell you this, to tell you what is happening. I am so excited to be here to kind of give you a bit of a roadmap as to what is going on with compassion and outreach as part of this church. Guys, this is it's my heart and my soul. I am passionate about this. It's something that I just, oh, I just love. So I'm really, really happy to be here. I've kind of titled this talk, The Roadmap, <laughs> which I don't know, I find that to be really funny. Um, I guess only if you're in England, you understand about The Roadmap. But I really want to share with you our vision, our hopes, and our dreams, and our plans for the next season. Guys, Jesus was the model of compassion and love. The first two commandments are love God and love others. And this perfectly captures the foundation of this church. Viv spoke about where we came from, and we can't wait to tell you where God is taking us. So what I want to do before I kind of get into anything is I want to open our Bibles to the foundation of Vineyard 61. So let's open to Isaiah 61. Guys, this is gold. <laughs> the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Guys, that's so good. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Strangers will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards. And you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations and in their riches you will boast. And I'm going to end right there. If Vineyard 61 is your church, your home, your community, then this is for you. We are an Isaiah 61 church, and I know we say that all the time, but I want you guys to really think about what that means. We are anointed by the creator of the universe to preach to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort those who mourn, to rebuild and restore what has been broken. That is who we are. We are a church who love people and not just people who look, act, and worship like us. If this church is your church, then you need to know who we really are. We are a bunch of imperfect people being transformed by Jesus, boldly bringing life wherever we are. In our soul, we are Isaiah 61. This is our DNA, and we take it really seriously. So are you ready this morning to jump on board again, to be that, uh, yes, that Isaiah 61 church God has called us to be because we believe the time is now? So I want to take you back a year ago and give you a brief background. Guys, things are going swimmingly. Job club and English school, they're running every week like clockwork. We are collecting bikes for the bike project. Volunteers are heading into glass door night shelter every Tuesday to help with the rough sleepers. We are collecting socks and important needs for our bags of blessings project. And honestly, guys, I'm like acing my job. <laughs> and then, bam. COVID hits, doors are shut, and I realize all we can do is pray. 
So we prayed a lot. We as a church were in this together. We started morning prayers five days a week that guys a year later are still going on. We prayed over homelessness, loneliness and isolation, healing. Guys, I there was so much healing happening over Zoom. My back was healed. Steve, do you remember that? Like, it was incredible. We prayed over injustices, boldness and activation, our neighborhoods and our cities. This past year, we've had to make really difficult decisions that have honestly broken our hearts. We moved the English school online, but when our beloved teacher, Baldeep, decided to move on, we had to close up shop. We realized it wasn't working, and so thankfully, Croydon Vineyards English School, which they are legends over there, brought our students into their fold so no one would be dropped. When healing on the streets and Battersea Outreach could no longer gather, we honestly thought Steve and Viv and Holly and Elias were going to lose it, and we mourned. But through our prayers and through our petitions, God showed us that it's not the projects, it's the people. Isaiah 61 is in our soul. We carry this wherever we go. You may be tuning in from Balaam, Battersea, Sussex, York, Wales, Guilford, North Carolina guy, my parents tuning in from Georgia. The vision that Steve had years ago where people would come into the fire and then carry that fire out is coming to fruition. COVID has shut our buildings, but our compassion is exploding. There are people that are part of this community who are stepping out in faith and befriending their neighbor, calling their elderly grandmother, buying someone a coffee and evangelizing to complete strangers. There is a wave of compassion like never before. This is us. People are being convicted to feed the hungry, invite the single mom into a life group and reach beyond our own circumstances to love our neighbors. Guys, God is not on lockdown. And I am in this. I am craving more. And I believe this is just the tip of the iceberg. Viv preached at the beginning of the Nehemiah series back in January from Nehemiah 1. If you haven't heard it, you have to go listen to it. It is so good. But she talked about crying, praying, and acting. We as a church have cried, we have prayed, and now we are acting. We know it's time for transparency. We want to be open and honest with everyone who calls V61 their church home. Knowledge is power, and we want you to be knowledgeable in what we are doing, who we are serving, and how you can come alongside us in the next few months as we begin to transition. But we also want to tell you about part of where your money, your tithings, your offerings are going so you can be excited about the work you are doing through your finances. We want you to be good stewards of your money, and we want to be good stewards of your money. So we believe in transparency, and that's why I'm here. All right, so let's get into the fun stuff. <laughs> We are officially partnering with three charities, and you guys, we just feel like you need to know that. We believe in the work they are doing. They are transparent while aligning with our core values and beliefs. So those three charities are The Bike Project, who work with refugees, A21, who, who deals with trafficking, and International Needs, who help families create a sustainable future, but on a global level. And I want you guys to know that there is a, a screening process that goes into these charities. We don't just pick them at random. 2020 has taught us how important inclusion is and choosing partnerships that reflect inclusivity and diversity. God is an inclusive God and we always want to align with him. We believe in these, three in these three charities and are passionate about moving forward with them. Now, it doesn't mean that we're not ever going to work with other organizations. That's not true at all. We're just really, really excited about the work that these three are doing. And unfortunately, I don't have time today to get into the bike project or A21, but you can find all that stuff on our website. But right now, I have some really, really exciting news. <laughs> Okay, I get really excited. <laughs> the Bible says we are meant to take the gospel to all nations. God's kingdom 
is bigger than just one country. There is a young girl named Sophia who lives in the Chiwende village in Uganda. And Eric, my husband, and I, she, uh, we're very close to her and her family. So the last time that I was in Chiwenda, I couldn't find Sophia. And so I was like, where is this girl? And I was starting to get really worried. Every single time that I went to Sophia's house, she wasn't there. And so I'd ask the neighbors, where is Sophia? And they would say, she's out fetching water. She's out fetching water. And I'd heard this so many times, but it really dawned on me that this nine-year-old girl was in charge of fetching water for drink and for bathing for eight of her family members. And this meant that she was late to school and she just couldn't be a kid. Have you ever been to a location where you cannot get a clean drink of water? Or have you been to a place where there's no shower or a place to wash your hands? It's kind of a problem right now with this pandemic. We recognize that this is real life for millions of people out there. God has put it on our hearts to help people living each day in conditions without water or clean facilities. And so situations like this, it really has our hearts. And V61 is eager to be involved with a three-year project called WASH. WASH stands for Water, Sanitation, and Hygiene, and the project will bring those items to 12 villages in the Bukwe district in Uganda. And so I, we have some pictures that we'll kind of show you. We are officially partnering with the International Needs Uganda organization to facilitate this WASH project, and we cannot wait to get started. We will be supporting and partnering with one of those villages over the next three years and forming a close relationship with the people there. We are going to be walking alongside this village, praying for them, while also helping them have better access to clean water and sanitation. We have committed to donating 25,000 pounds over the next three years. That's roughly 8,300 a year, and we know with God's help, we can make that happen. We understand this may sound staggering to some and small to others, but let me tell you about their vision. Their vision is to have all families in the Bukwe district having access to basic resources and helping them reach their full potential. And we get to be a part of their story. My favorite part, all right, I'm gonna be honest, is that we will have the opportunity to engage with them on the ground. We will be able to send a few of us over to the village to partner and see the progress, COVID depending. I honestly could talk about this all day, and I will if you see me like out and about, uh, but there isn't enough time and we have too much to get through. So please watch this space for updates on how you can get involved and help this incredible cause. All right, so those are our official partners on a national and global level. But now let's talk city, the city of London. One of our biggest prayers we had going into COVID was that people in our community would be convicted over certain injustices, but that they wouldn't just look to the church or the government to fix the problems, but have a boldness to go out and help. It's kind of like that vision Steve had where we go into the fire and then we take it out with us. We have a big vision for London, but it can't just be on the select few. Compassion is too big to fit in the church, so we take it out. It's everyone, everywhere. This is what an Isaiah 61 church looks like. And right now, I want to highlight a group of men who have taken that next step. Their hearts have been breaking for the homeless and a few months ago started doing something about it. This incredible homegrown ministry is called Mercy Street. And we have a little video. Mercy Street started with three members of the V61 family. Joel, Eric, and Hamish could not fathom people sleeping rough, so they started meeting in central London once a month, 
praying, asking the Holy Spirit where to take them, and off they went. There was no destination, no goal in mind, just a yearning to help and to love the poorest of the poor. There are so many organizations out there playing massive roles in homelessness, but these men kept feeling the pull to help in whatever little way they could. And that's how it began, just handing out a few dozen socks on a Saturday afternoon and sharing a coffee with someone on the streets. The stories being told are incredible. Not all of them are pleasant, but they are real. It's all about love in this ministry, loving the lost, the vulnerable, the people on the fringe. The people you saw in those pictures are now part of the Mercy Street family. Joel, Hamish, and Eric are in communication with them, helping them both practically and spiritually, but also just bringing them into the community. We as a church and through the Emergency Compassion Fund, money that you have so generously given into, are now helping to support this homegrown ministry. This is not a Vineyard 61 project. We are simply backing them however we can. Because we have not been able to meet at church and continue with our Bags of Blessings project, this is kind of organically morphed into this. So if any of you are interested in helping financially, you have items that you want to donate or you want to go walk the street with them, contact myself or any of the three men you see in those pictures. So as you can see, we as a church are acting on a global level, a national and city level, and now let's talk community. <laughs> About a month ago, Eric and I, we moved from Clapham South to Tooting, and even though that's not very far, we were kind of unfamiliar with the area. So one day, I was walking the streets, and I was walking up the high street back to my house, and as I was walking, there was this woman who was sitting on the bench. She looked to be about 65, 70 years old. And I just, I just knew that there was no way that I could walk by her without sitting down and having a chat. So I sat down next to her. We were very socially distanced, which made it really hard to hear her. But I asked her, I said, are you okay? And she just burst into tears and she was missing all of her teeth and she was fumbling with all of her bags. And I said, what's your name? And she goes, my name is Selena. And I said, Selena, I just, can't, let's just talk. So we sat there for about 30, 40 minutes and it was really powerful just to have a conversation even with a mask on. And so as we were getting up, it was starting to rain. And I said, I'm walking this way. Can I walk with you? She said, sure. And I'm not kidding. We walked so slow. And it is pouring rain. And Selena goes, would you like my umbrella? And I said, no, that's OK. I should have I taken it. And, <laughs> and we were walking. And as we were saying goodbye, she said, I feel so much better. After I left her, I was so convicted. I was like, God, what do I do? There has to be more. People are so lonely. And later on that week, I just kept thinking of Selena and asking God to help guide me. I asked him what church he wanted for us. And you know what he showed me? He showed me the power of community. He showed me the power of gathering together, coming together in fellowship, connecting, loving each other, befriending those that are lonely. He showed me the simple act of communication and the power behind stepping out to talk to just one person. And I'm not talking about people who are like-minded as us. Yes, that is very important. But I'm talking about reaching over the line and befriending people of all ages, income, color, and religion. He showed me how lost people are right now and that we can be the change in that. So when lockdown eases, we will be opening the hub, a community-like center on Mondays here at the URC where everyone is welcome. Job Club will remain virtual, which means we will no longer be reopening an in-person job club. The hub will take its place. See, when I say everyone is welcome, I mean everyone. That is you and that is me. 
We no longer want to pigeonhole certain groups. I loved the job club and the English school, and I know how much it helped people, and my heart breaks for that. I cried for, honestly, for about a week when we decided to shut the English school, but we believe what others are needing more than anything right now is community, where people are welcome to come as they are, have a coffee, a chat, take their shoes off, and feel like they are truly part of something, a place to invite Selena where she feels the love of Jesus. I, uh, I was on Instagram the other day, and I was scrolling through stories. Yeah, I know, I know. But I came across Maverick City, and there was a video of one of the guys, and maybe some of you have seen it, and he was talking about worship, but he said something so simple and so profound. He said, heaven is for all of us, not just some of us. And I thought to myself, how many times do we pray for heaven to invade earth, but are we really prepared for what that means? That means all of us. Are you alone on a Monday and you wanna drop in for a coffee? you're invited. Is your child driving you crazy and you need a place to be around other adults? You're invited. Are you hungry? You're invited. Is your spirit empty? You're invited. Could this be someone's church? You're invited. I believe full-heartedly this is community. What I know in my gut is this. <laughs> this will not be a place where it is us the Vineyard 61 members as volunteers, and then the users. This is not a service we will be running. This will be a hub for people to belong to, to come in and do some artwork with Holly, read the newspaper, use the old job club laptops to search for jobs. We don't want to be another program of compassion. We want relational, not transactional. We want to help people on their journey to discovering their hopes and dreams and God's unconditional love. This will be a place where everyone peels the potatoes, honestly my new favorite saying, <laughs> takes out the rubbish and puts away the chairs. This is going to be a place where everyone will feel welcome because everyone gets an invitation and everyone plays a part. This is very early stages and COVID is still very real, but I believe this is where God is wanting Vineyard 61 to go. We believe this is where God is wanting us to go. Realistically, doors will not be opening until mid-June, but preparations are underway, prayers are being lifted up, and you're invited into the fold. I'm so convicted Honestly, I'm so convicted, and I hope and pray that you are just as excited and convicted as us. We believe this is going to be a time of restoration, rebuilding, and salvation. We can't wait to see what happens next, and we feel really hopeful. So as I wrap up, we are going to come together in a communal prayer Katie, one of our core compassion members, sent across this prayer, and it completely sums up who we are as a community. We believe this is who we are. So let's stand up in unity together and pray. When it says Kristen, I read. When it says all in bold, you guys, you guys can join in. Are the words up? Okay. <sighs> God who exists three in one with community built into our very existence reminds us that you created us to be together in community bound up in one another's lives. Grant us the eyes to see the ones we have neglected, the pain we have not noticed. God who exists as community who calls us to welcome the stranger and befriend the broken. Hear our prayer as we lift up those who find themselves alone. Oh God, we pray for the widowed friend alone in a life built for two, for the child without parents reaching out for an embrace that won't come, for the single mother desperate for another set of hands, for the new immigrant climbing steep learning curves, for the recently diagnosed reeling from the news, for the brother in jail cut off from friends, 
family, and community. For the sister who has lost her child, cradling her arms around empty space. For the, for the elderly neighbor eating alone. For the rejected, the isolated, the ones cast aside and forgotten. God, hear our prayer. No one alone. Oh God, we pray, make us your church. Make us the companions, people who slow down and show up. Make friends who make space. Scoot over on the pew. Bring another chair to the table. Move in us, compelling us to sit with one another at court dates and doctor's appointments, to fill freezers with casseroles, to create carpools and supper clubs and babysitting co-ops, to teach English and job skills and emotional intelligence. God, hear our prayer. In our church, oh God, no one is alone. No one is alone. Not widows, not orphans, not immigrants, not single people, not sick people, not people who've been released from jail. No one alone. Not strangers, not victims, not perpetrators. Speak to us again, God of the Trinity, God of community. Call us back to our senses, back to one another. God, hear our prayer. Amen.